as a young adult, I spent time on an assembly line building cars. What an experience. You know, assembly lines are designed with speed and efficiency in mind. For making cars, they're ideal. The factory I worked at cranked out a new car off that assembly line about every minute, 30 seconds. And when things didn't go exactly right, the line would stop and loud buzzers would blare and lights would flash and help would come running. Time is money. Now, each car was built exactly the same as you would want it to be, with only small variables like color. One after another, the cars came, relentless in motion, a picture of excellence and efficiency. Now, everyone there worked so hard to ensure that every vehicle was exactly the same. Standards of excellence, that it was proper, correct, and right. Well, it makes sense. You want your brakes to work. You want steering to work. You want the lights to go on when, they, when you turn them on. One after another, they came. Now, remember, when something didn't go well, I said buzzers that would go off and lights would fill the space. Variables in the production process were considered defects. And friends, defects are unacceptable. Now, custom cars are very different. There is a painstaking process taken with every detail of a custom car. Colors and fabrics and features unique to an individual vehicle. Similarly, the engine and drivetrain are built out to particular distinctive specifications. Now, assembly lines, well, they're cranking out another car every minute and a half. Custom cars? Well, friends, they take time. Custom cars are anything but efficient, and they certainly aren't cost efficient. Friends, at PFC, you're probably aware that we are a community of faith, trying to follow Jesus in this time and in this place. We actually have been a deeply rooted part of the Pelham uh, community. For over 200 years, a community of faith has ga gathered under this name. And this year, we have launched Vision 2021 as a renewed guiding framework for our shared journey together. So uh, in this series, we have sought to unpack the foundations of this vision forward and then articulating the particulars of the values that unite us together. So friends, if you're new with us today, I invite you to go back and check out some of the previous week's talks, because that will give you an idea of who we are and who we're striving to be in this time and this place as a church family. As you may remember, our mission, the big why of our existence is that we exist to nurture an ever-deepening love of God and an ever-broadening love of others. And we do this. As we endeavor to do this, we are seeking to be friends who become family, who walk by faith, are known for love, and are a voice of hope. And when thinking about the idea of being family, there are shared values that we cling to that mark our interactions. Last week, we discussed being clearly Christ-centered. This week, we're looking at being relentlessly relational. And in the coming weeks, we're going to have a look at our other remaining values, being intentionally intergenerational, being boldly biblical, and being neighborly with that vertical and horizontal axis. Friends, this is Vision 2021. So relentlessly relational. Now, you sitting here today, you obviously know that you are not an inanimate object. You're thinking, you're interacting with what's happening on the screen. Maybe you're being distracted by something happening in your room. Maybe we're just boring you out of your mind. You aren't an inanimate object that simply moves to the whims of the uh, context around you. 
No, you have will and desire and hopes and dreams and passions and emotions and all of it swirls together to make you. The illustration I opened my talk with this morning serves as a stark reminder that assembly lines may be great for inanimate objects, but they're a terrible idea when considering anything with any sort of variable or uniqueness. Thinking of custom cars reveals this with crystal clarity. Now, as a human being, you are far more unique, complicated, beautiful, carrying an inherent worth far beyond any custom car. So when considering our interactions together, you better believe that we aren't interested in squeezing anyone through any sort of assembly line process. We step back and we look carefully to the scriptures to frame our interactions together. When we come to the conclusion that relationships matter, but relationships are also hard. So we say we're relentlessly relational, meaning that we won't give up when the going gets difficult. We're committed to the journey together. Friends, Genesis opens by saying, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now, John opens his gospel by peering back into the beginning before the beginning. And he says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Later in John 1, we see that the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. It's referring to Jesus. So in the beginning was Jesus, and Jesus was with God, and Jesus was God. Friends, you see what John is doing here. He's describing with more clarity the God mentioned in Genesis 1.1. A God that ends up being described by Christian theologians with language of Trinity. It's a description of God as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Now, the doctrine of the Trinity is a bit of a paradox in that it's difficult to wrap our minds around. But we are small human beings, and a God that can fit within the boxes of our understanding isn't really a God worthy of our worship. But friends, if we were to articulate with clarity the doctrine of the Trinity, we would emphasize that there is one and only one God. We would emphasize that God exists eternally in three distinct persons. We'd emphasize that the Father is God, the Son is God, and the Holy Spirit is God. And we'd emphasize that the Father is not the Son, and the Son is not the Father, and the Father is not the Spirit, and we could continue. These particulars of the doctrine of the Trinity swirl together to describe the nature of God. The Greek term perichoresis helps to describe the beautiful mystery of the Trinity. Perichoresis describes a dance of love. It's movement. It's dynamic interactions, responsive, passionately connected, a mutual serving of the other. Now, think of swirling movement connected and weaving around and around, up and down, in and through Motion of light, color, and passionate vibrancy. Well, this is perichoresis. This is the Trinity in a dynamic image. Alistair McGrath writes that this concept of perichoresis allows the individuality of the persons to be maintained while insisting that each person shares in the life of the other two. An image often used to express this idea is that of a community of being. That of a community of being. Think of each person while maintaining a distinct identity flowing together with the others while the others flow together with them. Again, if you're struggling to picture it, you aren't alone. It's a paradox. And yet what we can say 
is that it clearly speaks to the interconnected relationship of the Godhead. Trinity, perichoresis, both lay a firm foundation that the God revealed in the pages of the Bible is a deeply relational one. It's fair to say that the very nature of God is relationship. In the biblical creation narrative, God is pictured as saying in Genesis 1 verse 26, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness. And then in the next verse, in verse 27, it says, so God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. Friends, do you catch that the biblical picture is that humanity made in the image and likeness of a deeply relational God, is itself relational to the core. You, me, those around us, relational to the core. The person on the chat who maybe you've never met, relational to the core. We long for it. We need it. We feel incomplete without it. Back in 2000, the movie Castaway was released with Tom Hanks. Can, can you believe that it was that long ago? I, I'd issue a spoiler alert at this point, but come on, friends, the film is over 20 years old. So in the film, Tom gets stranded on a deserted island in the South Pacific, and it depicts the toll that being truly alone takes on a person. Eventually, Tom projects identity and friendship onto a volleyball, a volleyball named Wilson. In gut-wrenching clarity, Castaway reveals the deep need all of us have for someone, for someone. As a value, PFC clings to being relentlessly relational because we recognize that as image bearers of God, everyone needs someone. In being friends that become family, we're committing to providing a space for you to connect, even as others are seeking to connect. So it's not that we're saying you above all others, but you in the midst of all others, trying to connect. Now, we won't do this perfectly. We all bring our own baggage to community, which means that we will need to have grace for each other. When we fail others, we are relentless in our pursuit of relationship. So we ask for forgiveness. We admit it. We crack our heart and say, we're sorry. Now, when others fail us, we're relentless in our pursuit of relationships. So we reconcile and we forgive. When it, it comes to the ways in which we organize ourselves, we err on the side of relationship. We facilitate environments where each of us come as individuals with all the uniqueness of our journey to try and deepen our love for God and to try and broaden our love for others. The way in which we plan programs and activities will be far more similar to a custom car approach than it will be to an assembly line approach. We know that relationship and personal formation takes time. We know that relationship and personal formation aren't efficient processes. No, it takes a lifetime. We know that relationship and personal formation has uh, never been about the most cost-effective way to get to the end. No, relationship and personal formation must be entered into and accepted, come what may. So in our planning, we will aim to err on the side of relationship, err on the side of grace and love, err on the side of environments for individual thriving in the context of community. In many ways, friends, this really is the only way to go about real discipleship. If you think about that, discipleship being the process in which we seek to be like Jesus in our own lives. 
The next step on your discipleship journey is unique to you. It won't be the same step I'm taking. It won't be the same step, step that those on the board are taking. If we make decisions for a discipleship journey based on where we are, it undoubtedly won't be the right step for you. No, we seek to facilitate environments where we allow our individuality to come out. And yeah, we encourage the next step in each of our journeys, but it will be unique. And it will only make sense in the context of your story. Just like my discipleship journey is unique and only makes sense in the context of my journey. So in the context of relationship, we pursue Jesus. In the context of relationship, we each take the next step on our discipleship journey and becoming like Jesus. And in the context of relationship, we support and encourage each other along. We listen as we express our doubts or our fears or raise questions. We speak to those areas where we've gained a little clarity on the journey, where we've had something that's worked. We respond in love. We exist, friends, so that in the context of relationship, we emerge as salt and light to a neighborhood that we know all too often struggles with loneliness. We exist to nurture an ever-deepening love of God and an ever-broadening love of others. And we seek to be friends who become family, who live by faith, are known for love, and are a voice of hope. And as we do so, we will remain Christ-centered. And as we do so, we will remain relentlessly relational. Friends, you are welcome here. Gracious Father, we thank you that you have pursued relationship with us, that as a relational God, you have opened up relationship to created beings. And as we navigated the complexities of life in the here and now, we just long that we would do so in the context of relationship, relentlessly pursue relationship. And may it all bring honor and glory to you. So Lord Jesus, be with us in the process. May you give us strength, when we are weak. May you encourage us when we are feeling down. And we just pray that in this, we would bring honor and glory to you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.